G'day you play legends, thank you for joining me. I'm a little bit puffed out, I've been running around like an absolute crazy madman because we've had some beautiful photography conditions this morning. It's absolutely belted, you're gonna thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this morning's epic wide angle photography. And I'll give you one red hot tip when shooting wide angle photography, how you can really emphasize and make a key photography element to the foreground by just one simple tick that anyone can implement in their photography. But guys, before we get into this video, make sure to drop below and subscribe. I'm gonna roll you back one hour ago when conditions were absolutely rip snorter. Enjoy this one. So after a mad rush, because I think I may have made a mistake, but we'll find out after this image. I had two options to photograph this pool right here, or go around the corner and photograph a panoramic landscape style. With the sunrise, probably the panoramic would look better, but this overall composition image is very unique and I like it a lot better. So that's what we're going with, and we're sticking with it now because it's too bloody late. But this one red hot tip I want to give you is when shooting ultra wide angle, getting really low to the ground because it's going to emphasize your foreground. That's the one tip I want to give you. When you're shooting that wide angle, obviously everything gets crazy distorted because it is obviously wide angle. So lowering that to the foreground and emphasizing that crazy distortion actually adds an element into your photography. But also in this situation in particular, when I lower that foreground, it cuts a lot of this jargon around me. So I'm photographing just here getting the reflection of the lighthouse directly behind you guys with beautiful vivid colors. Now I also want to go through and show you what it's doing with the polarizer engaged because I want to try and clear it because this water is so pure and clear down here, it's incredible. So I want to cut through that and really emphasize and get rid of some of that glare, but not too much because I still want that beautiful red hue in this foreground here. So you can see when I engage and disengage that polarizer, Really what it's affecting is just this bottom area here and that left hand side, but closer to the lighthouse, it's not as much, if anything, emphasizing that red hue. So that's really, really important. So that one red hot tip I can give you is when you're shooting wide angle, not as low as you can go, but the lower you can go and emphasize that foreground, it's a really key element in wide angle photography. And it's a bit of a hidden secret gem that I want to share with you guys today. So lower, shooting at about between 10 and 16 mil, so in full frame around 16 to 21 millimeters, 22 millimeters. That's the key for that. Get low, get wide, get jiggy with it and photograph. All right, so the sun is just rising, as you can see, directly behind me. We're getting beautiful, beautiful conditions. I got an image earlier, but I also want an image from getting that really soft light, kissing the lighthouse and kissing all these rocks, just to see what it looks like before and sort of after. Because when you do shoot that sunrise sort of effect, and you get those beautiful red colors in the sky, obviously the foreground is quite dark because only the sky is illuminating. I don't really like blending the pure red skies in with a light foreground because it does look a bit unnatural. That's why I'm capturing two images to see what I like better. But guys, super simple. Shooting at around 20 mil. Focusing 
to infinity, two second timer, and just capturing this beautiful image right here. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> what absolutely cracking conditions we had this morning. Belter of a morning to be out here photographing. Guys, I told you that one red hot tip that anyone can implement into their wildlife photography. It is crazy simple, but it works. That's what's important. Whether it's wildflowers in the mountains, leading lines, rocks in the foreground, or as we shot today with that rock pole, eliminating those distractions and emphasizing with that polarizer in the foreground. It is so simple to implement and you can get out there and photograph with that wide angle. I've got a crazy low tripod working at 150 mils off the ground, a really small bowl panoramic head. Awesome, awesome tripod for photographing wide angle just like this. And the best thing is it's really thick and stable also. If you have a neck in your tripod, you can get a little choke that goes in there to get rid of that neck so you can get even lower to the foreground as well. So if you do have a man follow or whatever, you can get those little chokes in there. The tripods that I sell with next come with those chokes as also. So you can get low, get jiggy with it, as I explained today. But guys, we've got so much more belting and ripping content to come. I'm heading south now to even more rugged and crazy coastlines. Hopefully these conditions hold up. Went fishing yesterday, got bloody fish. Fish in the tucker. Fish in me belly, I'm a happy man. That means good photography is yet to come. Guys, please, I'd love it if you got down below, subscribed, leave a comment what you think about this wide angle photography tip. There's one thing I can guarantee, you can get out there, you can keep creating, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.